Hello guys, this is Star Raptor here, and welcome to another episode of Recap of Thrones. On Recap of Thrones, I break down every episode of Game of Thrones while providing my own bit of speculation. So without further ado, let's jump on into the episode. Season 6, Episode 3, titled Oathbreaker. As usual, here's the rundown. So we start at Castle Black, and it picks up right at the end of Episode 2. Jon Snow is alive! And he has a nice little chat with Melisandre and Davos, who are just absolutely shocked. I mean, how could you not be? The guy just came back from the dead. And also, towards the end of the episode, Jon Snow takes his vengeance out on his prior allies, Alistair Thorne, Ollie, and a couple other guys. And he walks away from the Night's Watch. Next up, we have On the Sea in transit to Old Town. In the Citadel, we have finally Samwell and Gilly. And basically what happens there is Samwell tells Gilly that she, he would rather have her and little Sam take residence in his old house at um, Horn Hill. So that'll be interesting. Um, as we know, Sam Wells' father is not the most pleasant of people, so that'll be cool seeing that storyline play out. Next up, we have another awesome vision from Bran. So we have uh, Bran and Blood Raven, or Thread Raven, um, kind of spectating one of the most pivotal parts in Robert's Rebellion, which is basically we see Ned Stark, who is confronting. Um, one of the Night's Guards, uh, Sir Arthur Dane, Sword of the Morning, the legendary uh, King's Guard. And uh, yeah, let's just say a little fight ensues. Greatly, um, and, and, and Sword of the Morning is greatly outnumbered, and that guy just kicks ass. And then it just cuts short as soon as Ned Stark is going to go into tower, it just. Uh, Blood Raven takes, uh, takes Bran out and says it's not, it's not time to see that yet. And next we have Daenerys returning in, in, in the episode at Vastathrak, and she is with the widows of the of the cows, and basically she's going to await some sort of trial um, to see what the cows are going to do with her, because according to the um, widows, she wasn't supposed to leave after Khal Drogo died. The tradition is she kind of goes immediately into that place and just stays there for eternity. Uh, but she, as we know, ends up going to Karth and all that stuff. Next up, we move over to Marine, where Varys makes a deal with the Harpy to get information. This was a great scene because we see how calm Varys can be, but how threatening he could be at the same time by basically judging the woman to threaten her child, um, and bribing her basically, uh, like he did with um, Tyrion's Shay back in season four, I want to say. And we also move in. To, so he gets the information. Var Varys gets the information um, about who is funding the Harpies, which turns out to be the um, cities of Yunkai, Astapor, and Volantis. So they got some big problems, and it's all about if they should send their army. Because if they send their unsullied army, then the whole city will be unprotected. So they got some serious decisions to make. Move along, we go to King's Landing, where Kyburn is converting Varys' little birds, who I don't think we really knew were kids. Um, at least we didn't know uh, straightforward enough. But yeah, he, he is uh, converting the kids for Cersei's own little plans of, you know, keeping an ear to the kingdom for any kind of threats and whatnot, gaining intelligence and all. Next up in King's Landing we have uh, basically a small council, so Jamie automatically tries to push himself into the council claiming that he is, um, you know, the lord of the Kingsguard or leader of the Kingsguard or whatever, captain, and he um, basically could be on the council and, and he wants to get down to business because Dorn needs to pay for their daughter's death so he's trying to get over there and they just leave as soon as he sits down so there's a bit of a, of a conflict between um, 
the council, the current council members, and Sarah Sam Jamie. And finally, in King's Landing, we have Tommen confronting the Sparrow, High Sparrow, about basically uh, Cersei being able to see Marcella. Right, uh, the Sparrow is standing up to the King of Westeros, which the kid, I mean, at least he's got balls enough to actually do something in this episode, but he's quickly squa uh, squ quickly put back into his place by the Sparrow, who just doesn't take crap from anybody, so he basically says no. Uh, Cersei cannot see Marcella because she has not atoned for her sins, even though she walked covered in crap and was naked for like through the whole King's Landing. She still hasn't had enough. She's got to do more to earn favor of the gods again. Next up, we go to Bravos, where we see uh, Arya Stark, um, you know, training like Daredevil over there with being blind and being with the staff, but she has come a long way and, 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 and she's going through the motions and she finally um, basically, I guess, impresses Jakuna Guar enough for her to do the ultimate test where he gives her that water that people usually drink and die to go to the rest. He gives that to her and she takes the ultimate risk to drink that thing. And guess what? She gets her vision back, so it's going to be nuts to see what kind of a warrior she's going to be now. What is she going to do? She's, she says she's no one. Did she really do that just to fool uh, Jekyll and Aguirre? Is she, is she really Arya Stark? Who knows? And finally, over there in Winterfell, we have Ramsay um, making an alliance with uh, the Umbers. Of course, this Umber leader, I'm not sure what his name was, is not not kneeling to anybody. He doesn't like the traditions of old. But in respects to Ramsay for helping him uh, quell the wildling uprising in the north, he offers uh, two gifts to Ramsay, which are none other than the long-forgotten um, Rick and Stark, and uh, please help me out in the comment section below. I forget her name. She's Tooks from uh, Harry Potter. Uh, darn it. I know she has a different name in the books than she does in the show. But that was basically what happened in tonight's episode. An absolutely awesome episode. This season's really, really just kicking off in high gear, I'll tell you. Um, I don't know if it's just because I don't know any of this stuff happening because I'm not a book, it's because the books are caught up or. or if they're really taking liberties with uh, some storylines here. I'm really digging it. So, getting into my strengths of the episode, I'm going to start with John's Awakening. The opening of this episode was just it was just amazing. Um, just to see the emotional impact this scene had, there was like no dialogue for like five minutes or something because all you hear is just the breathing. Like, Jon Snow is coming back, like, he's, he's like contemplating, like, I mean, at first I was like, can he speak? What's going to happen to him? I, I mean... He's just sitting there panting, and then Davos comes in, and then Melisandre, her expression is just absolutely crazy. Like, I did that? I actually resurrected somebody from that? You know, it's just like this awesome, awesome kind of reaction from from everyone. And it it was just like such a touching moment, because like you see the fear in, in John's eyes, like looking down at himself, saying, okay, I was definitely dead. Like, I wasn't knocked out. Like, those are actual wounds. And, and even Davos confirms it, and it's like, psychologically how can you deal with that like knowing that you were dead and then coming back to life like that ha and, and and Kit Harrington portrays that so well just that whole shock uh, and he was like breaking down because he knows how he got murdered he remembers exactly how it happened and everything like there's no memory loss or anything and then uh, uh, going on with John um back to the end of the episode now I was curious what he was going to do with Alistair Thorne and Ollie. I mean, you know, John, he's kind of a forgiving guy for the most part, but no, he just didn't have it with them. He killed them, and I'm happy for him to take that step, you know, and he, and he kind of reminded me of um, what, what Ned Stark always taught him, you know, the executioner must swing the sword, or, senator, or the sentencer must swing the sword, or something like that. And that's what he did. He got the last words for everybody. And of course, Ali, that little kid I hated, by the way. I, I'm so happy he's dead now. But he, he wouldn't even say one word, you know. That's how much of a bitch that kid was. He couldn't even say one word. It's just like, good. But that, yeah, that, that's, that sequence was really haunting. Because then you just see all of them hanging there. Their eyes are all, like, black and everything. It's just, it's just a really, 
really disturbing scene. And then, if that's not all, I mean, he just straight up leaves. Jon Snow just sets up, my watch is over. So, I mean, what's what do you guys think is going to happen? Well, I think he's going to lead the Wildlings. I mean, maybe, um... Uh, Pormen Giantsbane and, and, and Kit Harrington, um, yeah, the actor, <laughs> yeah, of course. Jon Snow is going to go assault Winterfell when he finds out that Ramsay Bolton has it, for sure. That's what's going to happen. That's what we're in the flames of Melisandre, at least, so going off her a little bit. That's what I think is going to happen. Next up, we are getting into another awesome flashback, thanks to Bran and his vision with the Werewood Trees as a war god. Uh, this is really cool that we're diving more into Robert's Rebellion now and Ned Stark versus Sword of the Morning. Um, first off, that actor looked a lot like um, <laughs> looked a lot like him. I, I, that was a, that was some good casting right there. Um, but the Sword of the Morning that was that was a sweet fight because I mean, as a book reader, there's a lot of history kind of uh, subtext sprinkled throughout the uh, Song of Ice and Fire. So, yeah, Arthur Dane's name comes up quite a bit in the legends of, like, everybody saying how good of a warrior it was. So to actually see this guy fighting, yeah, you actually believe that this guy was a legend because he's taking on four people at once and wielding two blades. I mean, I'm such a sucker when it comes to sword fights to begin with, but when you see somebody just dual wielding something like that, which doesn't really happen much often, uh, that was some badass sword play. I'll tell you, that guy just kicked ass. Like, Ned Stark would have totally been dead if it hadn't been for uh, Helen Reed, which I was very excited to see because I love the Krenog man of the neck, and it was cool seeing that guy. Because even in season one, we knew that his name was dropped. It's like, oh yeah, Helen Reed, um, Jojen Reed. That's their father, Amir Reed. Um, so yeah, I love the choreograph of that fight. Really, really good stuff. Next up, Arya Stark. Oh man, this is probably one of those moments in the episode where I was just so happy. Um, it Just to see her. And I just love the whole sequence where they were kind of cutting with the editing, going back and forth with the staff work, and then just like, telling um, the girl, which I don't know if we ever find out what her name is, but basically saying that um, um, she, she knows the name and will kill or something when, when the girl says her, her list is short. So it's kind of like, alright, she's bridging the gap into this other personality of uh, basically an assassin, like she's going to go around. Um, really good stuff from Arya Stark and, and just the fact that she's gonna get her vision back I mean this is great like what does this mean for the character is is she gonna do some missions now for Jakunagor like legit assassin missions or is she just gonna say okay I got my skills I'm out of here I, I lied to you guys I'm actually Arya Stark I just played that all around just so I can get skills from you you know I don't know what the what the uh, end game for her is but I have a feeling she's gonna take out Walder Frey. I think I mentioned that in another episode, um, but I'm still I'm still gunning for that. And finally, Winterfell. What a shock this was! I mean, absolutely, what a shock with with Ramsay being presented, Rickon by by the Umbers. I mean, I I'll be honest. I kind of forgot about Rickon Stark, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Rickon was last seen, I think, in season three. I think it might have been so. And here we are, season six, and there's so much, um, there's so much, like, uh, news and hype from Bran returning after not being in the show for a year. And here we have his brother, Rick, and show up, and, and the kid obviously, you know, been grown a lot, because he's a lot bigger than when, he was, when we last seen him. But, yeah, that's, that's gonna be really interesting, because before, um, the Bones were really concerned about getting Sansa back, like, she was literally the key to the North, the key to rally all the north up would be around her but now since they've lost her now they just get presented Bran Stark who I think I remember from when he went away they actually they were gonna go to the last hearth because that would be a safe refuge with the Umbers so the Umbers straight up betrayed the Starks with giving up uh, Rick into Ramsey so now it's going to be like, how are they going to win the North back? Because now that the Rickon's there, he's going to be in Winterfell. He's going to be like the puppet lord, I guess. You know, Bolton's, I guess, going to just kind of be like, yeah, I'm not the lord anymore, but he's really going to be given command, probably like, kind of like Cersei is. But, yeah, that that was really cool how they're bringing, bringing Rickon back all the way from back, 
all those seasons ago. So it's super, super awesome that was in there. Um, other than that, there was only like one weakness I had with the entire episode. Uh, I was just a little bit bummed that they cut out at the uh, vision with Bran with a uh, three-eyed raven kind of touched his shoulder and pulled him out. I really hope they don't hold this uh, till the end of the season because I myself as a book reader have a pretty good idea of what's in that tower. I don't want to give any inclination to you guys out there that haven't read the books, but uh, there's probably going to be a pretty big revelation in that tower. So whether or not we see Bran go back to that time period and just get in there, who knows. But I thought it was really interesting too about um, how basically Bran questioned Three-Eyed Raven and said, when can I ever leave this place? And Three-Eyed Raven says, when you know everything. I'm like, okay, so how is he ever going to know everything? But that'll be interesting. But that was my weakness for the episode, just, just uh, cutting out of that that area which I felt was really really important I just don't want them to hold it up so and wait till the end of the season they better give it to us hopefully next next week or the week after but that'll do it for my strengths and weaknesses now moving on to the quote of the episode I pull my favorite quote from the show and uh, so my free my quote from the show would be when Davos first uh, encounters Jon Snow being resurrected in the beginning of the episode he basically says, you're dead, and now you are not. That is completely fucking mad. <laughs> that is great, because Davos is like that character who's just like always so straightforward, and he just... I mean, how else do you react to somebody being dead? I mean, it, that, that quote pretty much explains itself. So guys, what was your favorite quote of the episode? I'm really interested to see hear what you guys said. Um, make sure you hit that comment section below. So looking forward to next week. You know, I have my episode up every Monday, so you look forward to that. But we have next week's episode, Season 6, Episode 4, and it's going to be titled uh, Book of the Stranger. So one character we haven't seen yet, which i seen in the previews for next week, is Littlefinger. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what Littlefinger's been up to in these last couple episodes that we haven't seen him. So, that is going to be it for this episode of Recap of Thrones. Um, guys, let's continue the discussion in that comment section below. What do you think of this episode? What do you guys think of this season of Game of Thrones so far? I'll be uh, going out on a limb here, guys, saying that I think this is the potential to be the best season of Game of Thrones. Um, just because it's not based off the books, the, cre the creators have a lot more control of what they can do. So, I'm really enjoying it. But guys, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up symbol. And guys, please subscribe to my channel because it's just easier way for you to see what I upload when I upload it. Speaking of uploads, I just uploaded my Captain America Civil War movie review, so be sure to check that out. Also, I you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Star Raptor as well as like my Facebook page at Star Raptor. Also, one other thing, guys, I'm actually part of a weekly music podcast called Audio Addiction. We basically cover music news. Um, we do, like, weekly topics. We do tour updates. I mean, we're ma mainly into the um, alternative rock kind of thing, but we talk about all kinds of music, basically. So please feel free to check us out on YouTube. And with that being said... I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and Valor Magulis.